I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. At the end of every episode, I've been asking you all to send me your questions about sex, love, relationships, and you have been. I've gotten a ton of really great questions and I do want to start responding to them. So I'm going to do something a little bit different today than what I have been doing. I'm going to actually respond to some of your questions. Now I didn't want to be all over the place, so I had to pick a topic. So today I'm going to respond to a couple questions that I've gotten about STIs. Mainly, how do you tell the people that you're dating or that you might be dating if you have an STI? So let's get to our first question. Hey Thomas, my name is Sarah and I'm a 20 year old female from a small town in Colorado. Hello Sarah, I love Colorado. Uh, a couple months ago, I noticed a red bump just outside of my vagina and freaked out. I was too afraid to go to the doctor right away, so I just waited to see if it would go away on its own. It didn't and it started to get painful, so I eventually went. I've actually been tested for stuff before, but not because of signs of anything, just because my doctor told me I should be. Anyways, I went in and my doctor told me that I had herpes. I literally almost started crying right there, but held it together as best I could. She tried to assure me that everything would be okay and that it wasn't a big deal. But that was more than two months ago. I'm on my meds now and I haven't had any more outbreaks, but I'm still really scared about it. I'm afraid it's going to come back again, even if I'm on my meds. I'm afraid to tell my friends. So I've told no one. I've completely stopped having sex, but I honestly haven't been horny anyways. What should I do? Okay, Sarah, so you might be freaking yourself out more than you need to, but that's okay. A lot of people get really nervous and you're getting it taken care of. And that's really the first thing that I wanna point out is you are taking steps for treatment. You went to the doctor, you got it looked at, you got on meds. This can be a really big and scary step for a lot of people. We're told a lot of really negative things about STIs from a really young age, so a lot of people might have an outbreak and then not go to the doctor because they're afraid of what the doctor is gonna say. And that's literally their job, is to treat you. So I think it's great that you went, you got put on meds, and it sounds like you're taking them. So you're taking the steps that you need to to take care of yourself. Number two, as I'm sure your doctor told you, the medications that are around now for herpes are really great. You didn't mention what medication you're on, but it's likely suppression therapy, which means that it's gonna make it much more difficult for you to have future outbreaks, but you can still have them. Also, it's gonna make it more difficult for you to pass it on to other people. It is possible, so you should let future partners know, but it does suppress the virus in your body. So here's the thing about herpes. I believe that the most recent uh, CDC statistics are that 50% of people under 50 years old have herpes. And one out of four or one out of five people have genital herpes. So a lot of people have herpes. Not everyone is talking about it. I'm not suggesting that you have to tell everyone about it, but you're not alone. And number three, social support is very important. You may or may not want to talk to your friends about it, but I think that keeping it to yourself entirely is probably not the best, especially if it's causing you distress. Perhaps you want to go to a clinic, see if there's someone there that you can talk to. Um, you could go to a therapist and talk to a therapist if it's causing you that much distress, or you could talk to a friend. I would suggest a friend that you can trust. So those are the three things. One, you're getting treatment. Two, a lot of people have herpes, you're not alone. And three, find a friend or go to a therapist or someone that you can talk to about it that you trust. So this next one is from Joe in New York City. Thomas, I'm a 27 year old HIV positive gay guy living in New York City and I'm having the worst time dating. I moved here about a year ago for work and I figured it would be very easy to date here because I always hear about how open and accepting NYC is. That hasn't been my experience and I can't tell if it's because of my HIV status or what. I've been positive for five years. Yes, I caught it very young. So you would have been like 22. Uh, but it wasn't a big deal in Atlanta. It honestly felt like fewer people cared there. But here, it seems like as soon as I tell someone, they bolt. So I've just stopped telling people. I'm actually undetectable and I don't have sex without condoms with anyone, so I know I'm not putting anyone at risk. But I do want more, like a boyfriend, and it doesn't seem to be working. Is there a certain amount of time I'm supposed to wait before I tell people about my status? So personally, I think that it's really important that you tell people before you engage in sex with them 
about any STI that you might have, and people are gonna respond different. Some people are gonna be totally okay with it, some people are not gonna be okay with it at all. But I do think it's important that they understand what risk they're engaging in beforehand. With that said, any sex is risky sex. Not everyone knows what their HIV status is. Not everyone knows that they have an STI. So you could have all of these things and not have symptoms and still pass it on to someone else. However, anyone that has an STI before you engage in sex with someone else, they should know what their risk is. So with that said, I don't think you need to tell everyone. So if you go on a first date with someone, I don't think you need to lead with it. There are, are a lot of first dates that never lead to a second date. So I just don't see any reason that you have to tell someone on a first date when there might be no chance that it even leads to a second date. I don't think that you need to walk around wearing a t-shirt that says what your HIV status is or if you have herpes or, or anything else. It's really no one else's business until you tell them. So the other side of that though is that a lot of people might think that if you go on a date with someone and you don't tell them, so then you wait until like the third or fourth date, that then they're gonna feel differently about it and think that you lied to them. So I don't really think that there is a specific answer of like you are supposed to wait a certain amount of days and then that's when you tell someone and that's perfect. I think that it really has to be up to you. Um, in New York, there are also a lot of people that are very open about their status. So if you're on any dating apps, you may notice that other people just have it there. Um, and their way of thinking might be like, I just want to tell people now so I don't have to deal with telling them later. I would rather just be very upfront about it. And I think that's really great that people can do that, but not everyone can and not everyone wants to and not everyone should have to. So the other part of your question is, is it the status or is it that dating in New York is just really difficult? And I think it could be both, to be honest with you. Dating in New York can be very hard. There's always someone else around the corner that might have something that you don't have or have a bigger apartment or more money or a better job. Um, and there's really, in the 15 years that I've been here, there are very few people that I know that have been in long-term relationships. It can be part of the city. So Joe, there's something else in your email that I really wanna point out. You said that you're undetectable, and that's awesome. It means that you've really been sticking to your medication, but I think there are a lot of people who might be watching this that have no idea what undetectable means. So, when someone is HIV positive, they have a viral load. When your viral load is so low, it means that you're undetectable, as though the virus cannot be detected by standard blood tests, which also means that it's very difficult to transmit the virus from yourself to another person. So you might see some signs that say undetectable equals untransmittable, and that's exactly what it's referring to. So if you continue to adhere to your medication the way that you have been, you're gonna to continue to be undetectable and untransmittable. And that's awesome. I also think that that's something that you can make sure and highlight to people when you tell them if you choose to as well. Um, I think that sometimes people think they have the information, but they may not have the information, and hearing it from someone that they care about or that they're getting to know can also be helpful. But if someone's gonna reject you right away because of something like that, you're probably better off without them. Okay, so that's it. Uh, thanks for watching this new scheduled programming that's different than how it has been in the past, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave me some comments below, send in your questions, let me know what you thought about this and if you'd like more. Okay, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.